hello hello crafty crandall fam welcome to another video today i wanted to do the follow-on to my art haul video which if you haven't seen it i will link leave it linked in the cards above uh, where i hauled three different art products that youtube had a huge influence on my buying i want to go through with you today what worked what didn't and just run down these supplies and whether or not i think that they are worth you purchasing because I bought these with my own money, uh, with the influence of YouTube. <laughs> um, I watch a lot of art YouTube and these were the supplies that I saw coming up again and again and again. And so I wanted to try them out for you and give you my take on whether or not they are actually worth it. The items that I have to discuss are the Posca markers that I purchased. This is the 15 pack. I also purchased the Illo sketchbook, which kind of broke the internet for a little while and was actually quite hard to get. And then finally, the Mia Himi gouache set, which if you haven't seen this around art YouTube, I don't know what art to YouTube you're looking at because it has been absolutely everywhere. And so I wanted to talk about these supplies with you today. So without any further ado, let's hear my thoughts. Let's talk about these Posca markers first. So these Posca markers are really cool. Uh, I really like them. They are a paint-based marker, so they're kind of like an acrylic paint in their opacity. They are super opaque and they can be layered really well. Uh, I've really enjoyed using them and I have tested them on a variety of mediums so that I could speak to the type of mediums that they work well on and the type of mediums that they don't. Uh, First and foremost, I want to say that I used these on my Halloween pumpkin this year and they worked fantastically well. So that was a huge plus. Highly recommend on any smooth surface, um, such as a pumpkin. <laughs> they worked really well for that and honestly, I was so impressed. They were fine with like the outside elements. Uh, at no point did the paint get uh, either washed off or marred in any way. So. That was a really cool application of these that I was not expecting. As far as more traditional art mediums, uh, I tried this on the Illo sketchbook actually, which you'll see in a second. Um, I tried them on watercolor paper, which I do not recommend doing. Watercolor paper is not what these are for. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Uh, they, the paper eats into the marker a lot, so I would not recommend using them on that. Any smooth paper like Bristol board or the Illo sketchbook or any drawing sketchbook, I would imagine these would be really good for. I used them on hot press paper and hot press paper was perfectly fine. So I also tried using these on canvas because I wasn't sure if the canvas would respond kind of like the, the watercolor paper and that it like ate the markers up. But because the canvas doesn't actually absorb the paint like the watercolor paper does, it didn't have that same problem. There was a little bit of pilling of the marker, uh, but not nearly as bad as with the watercolor paper because in that case, I think it was just the paper that was being eaten. Whereas with the canvas, I think it was more so the marker tip that was being eaten. So just be aware of that. Overall, I've used these a bunch and I don't think that I am really that close to running out of ink with them. So they have a lot of ink. They are super opaque. They are fast drying and they are very permanent. So overall, I give the Posca markers a 10 out of 10. YouTube has it right. The hype is worth it, guys. Uh, absolutely recommend the Posca markers if they are a medium that kind of speaks to you with their application. So you want to do more opaque based art. You want to have, you know, a shading style that doesn't involve blending because they do not blend uh, really at all. Um, you also have to be careful what lining tools you use with them. And on the canvas, I did find that they kind of smeared pencil. So be aware of that as well. Um, but overall, a fantastic experience thus far. I've really enjoyed using them and will continue to enjoy using them uh, as I progress in my artistic journey. Next, let's talk about the Illo sketchbook. So the Illo sketchbook, like I said, was a little bit difficult to get. I go into that a little bit more in my art haul video. Additionally, I didn't mention before with the Pasco markers, but I do have swatches of all of these supplies in that video. So if that's what you're interested in seeing, check out the art haul. This video is more so reviewing them after I've had a chance to use them. Going back to the Illo sketchbook. Again, hard to get, but you guys, this sketchbook is fantastic. I have used Posca markers, watercolors, wash, 
and alcohol based markers and have not had a problem with this paper. This paper is smooth, very smooth. So note that if you're using watercolor, you can't use watercolor like you do on watercolor paper. It doesn't absorb the paint as well, but it still works very well. Uh, the paper does warp, but if you close the sketchbook and you latch the latch, it latches very tight. So it really flattens your paper back out, which is a huge plus. I, I love that in these sketchbooks. The sketchbook has been really useful. Uh, I didn't have any problems at all with the paper. Um, I love using gouache on it. I highly recommend it for gouache. If you are looking for a multimedia sketchbook that kind of does it all, 10 out of 10. I will note that the alcohol marker does bleed through. The reason why you don't see it bleeding through a lot in my sketchbook is because I painted gouache on the page and then I went over it on the other side with the alcohol marker. So I kind of did a full page spread of gouache and then nothing's going to show through the opaque gouache that I have down. So that's kind of a trick if you have a sketchbook that alcohol marker bleeds through and you want to use alcohol marker in it, paint with acrylics or gouache or some opaque paint on the other side and then it won't bleed through and you won't have a problem. Or I've also seen other people who do alcohol marker illustrations and then incorporate somehow the alcohol marker that bled through into the piece on the other side, which is also super cool to do and a great way to combat this problem. Overall, the Ella sketchbook is definitely worth it in my opinion. The sketchbook wasn't terribly expensive and if you can get your hands on it, as in if Amazon will deliver it to you or if the Illo company has them in stock to order, from them directly, like highly recommend. It is a great sketchbook. It is definitely a multimedia sketchbook. You can use pretty much anything in this thing and it will take it just fine. Now let's talk about the Mia Himi jelly gouache. I was super excited about these um, and I really find that I'm enjoying using them a lot. There are some cons with them though that I'll talk about. Uh, first of all, this is a big freaking case. <laughs> These are not portable. Uh, I did a video painting with them outside and it was kind of a pain in the neck to have to carry them there. Uh, when normally, you know, if we just compare this, actually here, I'll, pu I'll pull it out here. If we compare the size of my normal travel watercolor palette and this thing, it's like night and day. <laughs> so just to give you a reference, this is not portable. Um, but that said, you can get smaller palettes to fill with those and just carry it around. So I think that's a great option for these if that's something that you're interested in doing and if you want to bring them with you. These jelly cups hold a ton of paint so you can totally fill a couple of smaller um, containers with them and take them with you wherever you want. Let them dry out. It doesn't really matter. They re-wet fine um, and just do that. That would be a fantastic way to bring them with you in a travel palette and not have to worry about it. Now I will say as far as them drying out, I've experienced them kind of starting to dry out already and I've only had them for a couple of months now and so like I said they re-wet really well. What I do is I have a piece of paper over the top of them at all times because I don't want the top of this thing to get all messy. I hate having like messy things and so this is my solution to that. However, if you do this, I will say it does let air get through so they do dry out a little bit faster. Now I read in my comment section actually that you can put like glad cling wrap on it um, they have like the sticky one and you can put that there so that the paint doesn't dry out and it also won't get on the top of it. So I am definitely going to try that. I plan on doing a whole video trying out all of your suggestions because you guys leave such amazing suggestions in my comments and I truly appreciate it and I just want to take them all. <laughs> take all the suggestions and give them all a try because I truly believe that they are good suggestions and I am interested in trying them. But back to my thoughts on the jelly gouache. I think it's fantastic. It works really well um, as far as gouache is concerned. I like it more than my Arteza gouache by far. 
Having the jelly cups is super convenient because you don't need to like fuss about with getting like the proper amount of paint through a tube onto your palette. You can just use as much paint as you need. It is so freeing not to have to worry about wasting paint. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid because there is no such thing as wasting paint. I swear to you, <laughs> if you are painting, that is not a waste of paint. <laughs> you are practicing your, your medium and it is worth it 100%. And I, you know, say that and I understand that and yet it still feels like I'm wasting paint sometimes and these don't make me feel like that at all. So 10 out of 10 for quantity supplied. Price point is pretty decent. It was not super expensive, um, even for like the, the 24 set, which even comes with some brushes. Uh, the one thing I would say is that these do have like sort of a, they dry very dry. Um, they do kind of crack or have that chalkiness to them. Not as bad as the Arteza gouache, but they do still have that, that quality to them. Um, and also just again, I think the form factor isn't great for traveling. So they are just kind of a desk kit, but overall I really enjoy them. I do think that they are worth it. And I think that they'd make a great investment if you're interested in trying gouache. These are such a perfect way to try out gouache because you don't have to worry that you're using it all up. Honestly, guys, I think that YouTube got it right. I think that everyone who's reviewed these products is being really truthful about them. And I would totally recommend all of them. These are overhyped for a reason. They are really great and I am so impressed with each one of them and I am very excited to own them and just continue to improve my art with them as I do believe that they are really good products for the amount of money that I spent on them and just think that YouTube wasn't lying. These overhyped products are in fact worth the hype. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a like. If you really liked the video, please consider subscribing to my channel down below. Hitting the notification bell, it really helps out the channel. I post new videos every Tuesday and occasionally on Fridays on art and book related topics. With that guys, I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.